this short video, we will go through what the MCT or Manufacturing Critical Path Time means. At the end of this video, you know what MCT stands for and you know the basic assumptions of MCT. You can recognize the MCT in a simple process. Also, you know why the critical path time is an important measure to use. As earlier said, MCT stands for Manufacturing Critical Path Time. And the MCT is used to measure the performance of a company or the performance of a series of processes in a company to deliver a product for a customer. The MCT is the typical amount of calendar time from when a customer submits an order through the critical path until the first end item of that order is delivered to the customer. Let's look to this definition in more detail. First start with typical amount. Take in mind that an MCT is for the rough idea of improvement of the processes of a company. And the purpose of this MCT is to understand where the biggest opportunities for improvement are. In a later stage of the analysis, maybe it's necessary to go into detail, but for now, details are less important. So look at an average typical amount of time the organization needs to produce a typical amount of products or services that your customer orders. Later in the course, we will elaborate a bit more on this typical amount. Next is, why use calendar time? Most companies work during the week. Why include the days of the weekend in the calculation? Well, customers do not care if, when and how long a company works. They care about when they receive a product. That's why MCT measures the real time that is elapsed and not only the elapsed working time. So we use calendar time. We start measuring the time as soon as the customer submits an order, because we look at the customer's perspective for starting the clock. The critical path is more difficult. We will come to the calculation of the critical path in a later video, and we will explain what to include and exclude in the calculation of the time of this critical path. But in short, the critical path includes all the necessary activities from the start of the production of all the critical parts. And this includes all the activities to produce an order from scratch until the finished product. So if a company has parts in stock, the time needed to produce these parts and the time spent by material in the warehouse before the actual assembly or further production is taken into account. And just like project planning or production planning, the critical path is the longest path from start to finish. We stop the clock as soon as the first end item of the order we produce is delivered to the customer. As delivering value to the customer is the main focus of a company, we stop the clock when the customer can use the product. So this is the first end item delivered at the receiving point of our customer. For single items this is easy to follow. But when to stop the clock if the customer orders a set of items or when to stop the clock as a batch of products is ordered. Don't forget, it must be an item or a set of items that the customer can use. If the customer orders different parts that only can be used together, the clock stops as soon as a complete useful set is delivered of these different parts. If a batch is ordered, we start measuring as soon as the first item is ordered and we follow this part throughout the whole process. So it's logical to stop the time as soon as the first item is delivered. In later videos we will provide more details, calculation methods and examples. But it is important to understand this definition and keep this definition in mind when you draw a map, calculate times and improvements and so on. Let's give a simple example of this MCT. As we said, we use calendar days to calculate, so we look at the days it takes from the order of the customer to the delivery of the product. And we start with a simple straightforward process. This process as a sales process, two manufacturing processes, and after this the product is transported to the customer. Let's say the customer only wants one product, to keep this example simple. The first day, this is a Wednesday, the customer calls the sales departments of the company for the product. The sales department takes more orders during the day, and at the end of the day, all the orders are sent to the production department. So the elapsed time of this order is one day. The next day, the product is not immediately produced as more orders has to be produced on this first workstation too. In the afternoon, the production starts and goes on the next morning. 
The product is put on the pallet with the other products and at the end of the day the pallet is sent to the second workstation. The elapsed time at this workstation was two calendar days. During the weekend no work was done, so the elapsed time between the first and the second workstation is two days. Our product is first on the line at the second workstation. It is finished in three hours and put on a pallet again. In the afternoon it is put in the end storage. So the elapsed time is one day. The next day the product is put in a truck and shipped to the customer. So this is one day too. If we add all the days up, it is seven calendar days elapsed time from the time the customer orders a product until the moment the customer receives the product to use it. As you can see, this is not the time that is actually worked on the product. In a later video you can learn the difference between time that the product is actually processed and the time that the product lays still and is not touched. Let's take a little more difficult scenario. This scenario involves the production of two different parts on two parallel workstations and these parts are assembled at the last workstation. Let's add some stock to it. At the top workstation it takes one day elapsed time to produce a part, but because these parts are not produced regularly they are made to stock. On average the parts are three days in the warehouse before they are processed at the assembly line. If we want to know the critical part of the production of this product, we take both the production time as well as the time spent in stock and use this to calculate the elapsed time. In later videos we will go into detail why this is and how you can calculate the elapsed time in different scenarios. So we have a new critical part. The original two days production time of the part at the first workstation is less than the time it takes to produce the other part and have it on stock. Let's follow the new situation. The customer orders the product and the order is sent to the first workstation. This takes one day. Next, the critical part consists of the production with an elapsed time of one day. After this product is three days in stock, but remember, during this time we have also had a weekend. So these two weekend days are part of the critical part too. This makes in total five days of elapsed time. The next step is the two parts are assembled to the end product and put in the warehouse. The next day the product is shipped to the customer. So this new MCT is 9 calendar days. Why use an MCT? As is shown in the example, the time that the company actually worked for the customer in making the product is a few hours in total, but their lapse time was 7 or 9 days. Research has shown that for a lot of companies, between 80 to 95% of the time that a customer has to wait on an ordered product, nothing happens. A lot of improvement methods focus on the time that work is actually done at the product. But if this working time is between 5 to 20% of the time, why not focus on the biggest opportunity for improvement? This is this 80 to 90% of the time that nothing happens. Imagine what you can do in this time. You can start later or promise shorter delivery times and this means that crush jobs or hot jobs will no longer exist. These jobs will be normal jobs. This means also you can be more flexible. Of course, just as other improvement methods state, in reducing waste and in this case idle time, you get a clear sight on quality issues and the need for improvement. All the activities are taken into account from start to finish so it can be applied as a company-wide metric. I think about cost. Less infantry, less time between the order and the delivery, so less time between when the company starts making costs and the time the invoice can be sent to the customer. Another reason the MCT is useful is to use is the clear start and end of the process. It starts with the order of the customer and ends as soon as the customer receives a useful product or service. In other videos you can learn how to calculate the MCT in more detail, use metrics to measure improvement, learn how to make an MCT map and so on.